Hi, my name is Doug Windiker, QA Product Specialist, and today we're going to look at the communication from our measuring devices back to the QA Supervisor software. So let's take a look. Okay, so today we're going to cover um, setting up a new measuring device in QA Supervisor. So I'm going to log into the software here, and I'm going to navigate over to Main Data Measuring Devices, and uh, this is the measuring devices that I have currently in our software. So I have some IRC Connects, I have an SD Wrench, and there's two SD Pads there in the middle of that list, uh, and they have a blue line over to the left side. That blue line is our indication that these two devices are communicating on the network and the software sees them. So let's uh, look in detail to this SD Pad here. So you can see it says online right here, yes. So it is online, uh, and again, that's validated by that blue line. So, And this is what we're gonna be entering in, and what we're gonna enter in is an ST Palm. So let's go ahead and do that now. So I'm gonna close out of this window and go up here to the right, upper right and hit Add, and I open up Add Measuring Device Field. So not all these uh, fields are required to entering a new measuring device. So what I'm gonna do is hit Save, and the software is gonna let me know what's absolutely required. So as you see, we just need a name, model, and serial number really is all required to enter a measuring device right now. So um, let's do that. So let's add this in. So I'll give it a name. I'm gonna select the model number, it's an ST Palm. Serial number is A139619. So that's where I got that in my name there, that's 619, it's actually part of the serial number, the last three digits serial number. So I'm not gonna enter a description in here. I think itself, the name has ST Palm in it already. Uh, and I'm not gonna enter an identifier, unique identifier number for it. Uh, in this case, I, I know what it is. Uh, unique identifiers are maybe uh, customers have, have asset numbers assigned to different uh, devices or devices that they own or, or product that they own. I'm not going to put that in there. It's not required. So the next thing down here is location. Um, and location, by default, says Atlas Copco. And the reason it says Atlas Copco is my factory structure in my software, Atlas Copco is the name of the factory I have at the very top level. So that's where it's going to default to. But just note that we can actually uh, be very specific in its location. So if we have any sub buildings or lines or something like that, or maybe tool cribs, uh, we can put that in and we can be very, very specific where, it's, uh, where this device is going to reside. But I'm going to leave it at the highest level up here. I'm going to hit apply. And then uh, next thing I'm going to do is move down to status. So by default, when we're entering in a new device, the status is in use. We have a couple other options underneath here. We have service repair and scrap disabled. So if our device is already in use and uh, we need to send it in for some kind of service or repair, we can change the status to service repair. And then effectively what we can do is unlicense it and then possibly move that license over to a spare. So that's the reason why we have that. And, and that's the next thing I have to do here now is license this product. So as I move that slide over, I've consumed one of my five licenses and I've licensed this measuring device. So, And I'm gonna leave the next things uh, by their default, the delete memory enabled uh, delete measures. Um, I'm going to leave that uh, as they are. And then under connectivity here is this is important. This is where we need to put in the device name or the static IP address. So I have a static IP address for this ST Palm. I already have programmed in the ST Palm, so it's already got that in there. It's already communicating. Uh, so when we uh, hit save here, I should be able to be st establish communication right away. So. So my static IP is in there. Uh, I'm gonna leave the port at 60,005, that's default. And I'm gonna select my supplier now. This will be Atlas Copco. And then my purchase date, if now, you know, if I just click on the field, it's gonna open up a calendar and I can select what date I actually uh, receive this product and put it in use. So. And then underneath there, we can attach uh, calibration certificates if we needed to. And then we have connected measuring devices uh, to this SD Palm. So if I knew I was going to be communicating with an SD wrench in this case, if I needed to do some joint checks, I can go up here and select uh, which measuring device. Uh, I'm actually going to leave this blank right now, and I'll maybe come back to this later when I decide what wrench I'm going to use or what IRC connect I'm going to use. And then underneath there, we have connected transducers. And then we have a note field at the very bottom here, so we can see. Uh, if, we, if we wanted to add a note to this. So the next thing I have to do is hit save. Um, and my list has been refreshed over here and you can see here's the new measuring device that I added, the ST Palm 619 Doug. Uh, there is no blue line over there to the left. So what I need to do now at this point is uh, is go in and well, make sure my palm is on and communicating or up and, uh, in the software. 
and then uh, hit refresh online and see if it pops up in our measuring devices. So I expect that this is going to start communicating uh, right away. So, yep, and there it is. So we got the blue line over to the left of the measuring device. So I know it's communicating and we're ready to send some routes down to this SSD Palm and collect some data. So, and then after we've collected data, if we did that, if we, if we uh, shipped a route down there, we've gone and collected some data, maybe some uh, in residual joint checks. The next thing you need to do to collect the results from our new measuring devices is highlight them and then go over here and, and hit get results. And that's going to open up the synchronization window. And um, that was awful quick. Um, there is probably no results in there. So that's why we got that synchronized as uh, completed successfully so fast is uh, is probably there's nothing in there but that's the procedure is go up here hit get results and it is pretty quick when it brings in the results so we should get that green notification back and then what we need to do next is actually go to the inspections results and if there was data in there they would show up here and this is where we would actually view the results and look at the test so if I had some re residual checks from that and this is where we'd see the data so so that was the communication between QA Supervisor Software back to our measuring devices. If you have any further questions, contact your Atlas Copco rep, and thank you for watching.